All right, awesome. Okay, so we're converting between radians and degrees, okay? This is our continuation for our 4.1 notes. So we're continuing our magnitudes of rotations and measures of arcs, okay? Um, so we've done, we've done converting between radians and degrees before. We have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we have done it in Algebra 2 last year. And uh, it's just a simple ratio that we use when we go from degrees to radians or radians to degrees. We use the equivalency that, um, we use the equivalency that 180 degrees is equal to pi, right? So we know that in degrees, 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. So um, we use this equivalency to multiply by the ratio of pi over pi radians over 180 degrees or 180 degrees over pi radians. So this technically is equal to one. Each one of these fractions is equal to one because pi is the same thing as 180 degrees. So it's like dividing by itself and same thing here. So how do you know which to multiply by? depending on what you're given, right? How do you know which one to, to multiply by? Well, you have to think of it like unit conversions, okay? If you have a piece of fabric um, that is two yards and you wanna know how many inches it is, okay? So two yards, that's over one, right? Oh, but you can't see that, I knew that. We put that over one. Now, if I want to get rid of the yard unit, that means I have to have the yards in the denominator, okay? So there's three feet to a yard. So we're converting to feet and then we're gonna convert the feet into inches. So there's three feet to a yard. So this is a, um, a fraction that's also equivalent to one. But we, do, we make sure that yards, sorry, yards are in the denominator so that they can cancel out, okay? But then we also need to convert feet to inches, and we know there's 12 inches and a foot, and since feet is our current unit now, we wanna make sure that feet are in the denominator here, so it also cancels out. And so you're only left with inches in the numerator, which is the unit you'll be left with. So you'll just do two times three times 12 inches, okay? And that, that'll give you your um, inches for two yards, which would be 72 inches, I believe. So essentially you want the, the unit you are um, getting rid of should be in the denominator. Another way to look at it is the is whatever units you're starting with should be in the denominator. Okay, so if I have if I have if I want to convert 200 degrees, I have convert degrees to radians or radians to degrees accordingly. So if I want to convert 200 degrees, that means when I multiply 200 degrees by one of these, I'm going to multiply it by the one that has degrees in the denominator. So it's going to be pi over 180 degrees. Okay, so it's my pi radians. So when I have degrees in the denominator, they'll cancel and I'll just have multiply across and I'll have 200 pi radians over 180. Notice I didn't put any degrees because degrees essentially canceled out. And then the goal is to simplify the 200 and the 180, right? So you can do that in a calculator and, and get a, a simplified fraction you can divide and get a decimal, but 
more often than not, when we're leaving it in radians, we want a simplified fraction. And so you can think of 200 and 180. Um, you can easily simplify this by 10, okay? And so it'll be 20 pi over 18. You can simplify that further at the very least by two, right? So that'll be 10 over nine. So you have 10 pi over nine radians. Okay. Similarly over here, when we go from, we have two pi over five. So this is gonna be in radians. Um, so when we multiply, determine which one to multiply by, you want pi in the denominator so that this pi cancels out. So we're gonna multiply this by 180 degrees over pi, okay? And again, the whole point of that is so that our pi's divide out, okay? And then we're left with two times 180 degrees divided by five. So two times 180 degrees is 360 degrees divided by five. So then you're gonna do 360 degrees divided by five there. And that's gonna give you 72 degrees. Okay. Um, so that's that's it, that's, that's converting between radians and degrees. So again, we're, we didn't, we're not dwelling on it too much because this is something that you've done in the past in algebra two. We spent quite a, quite a bit of time on it. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want you guys to take out your 4.1b and we're gonna do a quick check for understanding here. And I want you guys to um, convert right now for a quick check for understanding. I want you guys to convert number one and uh, number four. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys four minutes. I think it'll take you like two minutes each. I'm going to give you guys four minutes to convert number one and number four. Okay. Um, All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that was our time. Um, so Lumeria, welcome to class, hon. Um, thank you for coming in. Uh, I understand it, it was hard to, yeah, don't worry. Um, or you'll catch up. We haven't done too much, too far into it. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna, I'm gonna launch a poll and I want you guys to go ahead and respond to um, the two questions and what your answers were when, for the two questions, okay? So there you go. Just to see where we're all at, okay. I read the answer choices carefully, please. So far we have five out of nine. All right. Thank you so much for your votes, ladies and gents. So it looks like the majority of us were able to 
um, correctly identify and correctly convert, I should say, number one, pi over three um, into degrees. Okay, so radians, that means we should have pi in the denominator, right? And 180 degrees at the top there. So our pi's will divide each other out and become one. So I'll just be left with 180 degrees divided by three. 18 divided by three is six. So this would just leave us with 60 degrees there. Okay. And I didn't realize it at the time, but apparently number four is uh, quite similar. It's literally going backwards, right? But if you show the work for it, um, you're gonna now, this time around, you're gonna have 180 degrees in the denominator because you want the degrees as units to cancel and you'll have pi at the top. And then once again, you'll have 60 pi, so you're just multiplying across over 180. Six over 18, that becomes um, one over three. So really we're just gonna be left with pi over three radians there, okay? So it's just a matter of simplifying, finding your GCFs and, and simplifying your fractions down there. Okay, the rest of this I'm gonna uh, is, is your classwork for the day, um, in addition to the other classwork. So I do want to move on to our arc, um, arc length. Okay, so we learned how to convert radians to degrees, right? From our objective here. So on on Tuesday we talked about the magnitudes of rotation. Okay, um, today we talked about so far converting between degrees and radians. And next is using arc length formula. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about the arc length formula now. Okay. Um, but I have, a, I have a quick, before we move on, I have a quick interesting question here. I want you to answer, what is the difference between five radians and five pi radians. What's the difference between five radians and five pi radians? Is there a difference? Okay, so in order to do that, we can convert each one into degrees, five radians versus five pi radians. Okay, I hope we realize that five pi is very different from five radians, simply because pi itself is a number, right? So five pi is five times that versus five radians where it's just five radians. It's five times that your radius goes around, um, that goes around your circumference there. So if I were to convert five radians, I would still have to divide by pi because we're converting radians, okay? Um, and I would have to have 180 degrees at the top there. Unfortunately, there's no pi to actually um, cancel out, but this is essentially the radians will simplify there. Five times 180 will give me 900 degrees here divided by pi. So when I divide that by pi, I get 286.48 degrees. Versus if I do five pi radians, put that over one, and then same thing, 180 degrees over pi. The pi's will cancel, and I'm just going to be left with five times 180 degrees, which is 900 degrees. So five pi radians is significantly larger than five radians, right? <clears throat> That's our difference there. So the pi matters. Don't forget the pi. That's the whole point here. Don't forget the pi, okay? Don't forget the pi. It's important. Um, okay, so arc length, okay? This is kind of, it, it kind of, uh, I don't know if it showed up in your notes as colorful, but this says that theta must be in radians, 
Okay. Theta must be in radians. Okay. So what does that mean? That means your angle must be in radians. And you're like, Miss K, you're, you're talking gibberish to me. Um, the reason why we're talking about theta here, our angle, is because when we want, when we're trying to find the arc length, okay, the arc length is essentially the arc cut by a central angle theta. So in a circle, right, in a circle, here's my circle, I have my radius right here, okay, suppose I have an angle here, Okay. okay, suppose I have that angle right there. This angle, since it's the vertex is at the center, it's called the central angle. Okay, so we can call that central angle theta. Um, so suppose I want to know the length of its arc. I want to know the length of its arc, the distance from one ray to the other. I want to know this arc length. Well, that's our S. That's what we're denoting as S. Okay. Um, so to find our arc length, uh, we essentially have to use this formula right here. Arc length is equal to our radius, okay, times our theta, times our angle. So this comes, this derives from the fact that our angle can be found by taking our arc length and dividing it by our radius. And so if we just simply um, multiply the radius over, we get that arc length is equal to radius times our theta. So I'm gonna, we can write that a lot bigger right here, radius times our theta, okay? Um, but again, here's the, here's the catch. Your theta must be in radians. So if your theta is given to you, in terms of degrees, then your first step has to be to convert your theta into radians. Okay, so for example here, it says find the length of each arc for the given circles. Okay, um, we are given this circle here. We're given, we want, we want this arc length right here. That's our question mark. That arc length has a central angle of 45 degrees, okay? And then over here, we're given 16 centimeters. Now, is that 16 centimeters our radius or diameter based on this figure? Write that in the chat. Is that our radius or our diameter? What do you think? Okay. The question in the chat. Is the 16 centimeters our radius or diameter? That's the question I want answered in the chat. So thank you, Juan. Thank you, Kelly, for your answers. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Lumeria. Okay. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you, Erin. Okay, well done. I'm, I'm glad that, that we don't have any misconceptions. Um, every single one of you said diameter, okay? So yes, since it's in the center, it's our diameter. So our radius, right? We need our radius for our arc length. So our radius is gonna be half of our diameter. That's gonna be eight centimeters. You guys remember that, right? That your diameter is double the radius or your radius is half of your diameter, okay? So your diameter is equal to two times your radius, right? Something to always keep in mind and remember. Okay, so we have our radius. We now we need our theta in terms of radians. Okay, we don't want it in degrees. We need radians. So we're going to take 45 degrees, okay, for theta, and we're going to convert it into radians. So multiply, we need degrees in the denominator. So then pi goes on top by degree units, go blah, blah, okay? Um, so I'm gonna be left with 45 pi over 
And I don't know about you, but uh, I don't want to deal with big numbers when I'm multiplying like that. So I'm going to simplify that. And uh, 45 and 180 actually, uh, 45, there are four 45s and 180. So I can actually divide by 45 and simplify. That's going to be one. That's going to be four. So my theta is actually pi over four. If, if you guys remember that from the unit circle, then kudos right on. Okay, because that is something that's actually, it's one of our uh, basic angles in our unit circle. Okay, so then we have our theta and radians, we have our radius, and we find our arc length. So we'll have our radius at eight centimeters times pi over four there. And that's just going to be eight pi over four centimeters there. Simplify eight divided by four, two pi centimeters. That's our arc length. Okay. That's all. That's all we got. That's all she wrote. Okay. Um. Second example. Okay, I'm gonna go much faster. I promise. A circle with a 60 degree angle and a nine centimeter radius. Okay, so our angle here, 60 degrees, that's not our arc length. Okay, that's different. That's our angle. Um, they're essentially giving us the, the angle measurement. Um, arc length is usually distance, it's length, right? So, and then our radius is nine centimeters. They gave us that too. Okay, so once again, I have my arc length equals, um, am I forgetting to do something here? My radius times my theta. What do I have to do here? What goes where? Any takers? Anyone? Anyone? Is everything how it's supposed to be? Do I have my radius? Do I have my theta? Okay, yes, thank you. I have to um, I have to convert my theta into radians, right? 60 degrees needs to be converted into radians. So we're gonna do that first, 60 degrees uh, times pi over 180 degrees there. Um, that's going to be 60, oops, sorry, the degrees are going to cancel, so I don't need that. So 60 pi over 180, that will simplify down to pi over 3 radians. So with here, I have my 9 centimeters for my radius, and then I have my pi over 3 for my theta, okay? And again, oh, this looks like it's going to be pretty nice. Nine pi centimeters over three. Again, simplify it down to three pi centimeters. And that's my arc length here, three pi centimeters. Please don't multiply in the pi. It becomes very, very exhausting. Um, okay, so uh, for our check for understanding for this one, Oops, sorry, did not mean to move things. That was, it caught. So I check for understanding for this one. Let's have you guys. Okay, I'm gonna ask you guys to do number two. Okay, on 4.1C. So we're on 4.1C. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys to do number two and then flip it over to the back. Okay, flip it over to the back and I want you guys to do number seven. So two and seven. Okay, I will give you guys um, five minutes to do both. Yes, no? Five minutes to do both. So, um, so number two and number seven on 4.1 C. 
Okay. That's what we're working on. Five minutes to do that. Okay, so let's have uh, that going. All right, guys, so that, that was five minutes. If you are ready, um, the poll has been put up. You can put in your answers, okay, um, that you receive for number two on the 4.1C worksheet and number seven on the 4.1C worksheet. Okay, I'll give you guys some time to put in those answers. Okay, there seems to be a bit of discrepancy so far. Oh, look at that. Quite a few variations for number seven. Okay, we have seven out of 10 votes. I would like to hear from everyone. Okay. I'm going to leave that poll up so I can hear from everyone, but let's take a look at number two. Okay, right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two here. So for number two, um, remember arc length formula, we have S is equal to radius times theta, right? And theta must be in radians. So that's very important. Um, our radius here, 16 miles. So we got 16 miles for our radius. Our theta is actually already in radians, pi over 2. So we're good to go there. Um, if you have a difficult time multiplying fractions there, you get the 16 miles, it's a whole number, so you can put it over one, multiply across, you'll get 16 pi miles over two. So then simplify the 16 and the two, the eight over one, so you get eight pi miles. So everyone that chose our first answer there, well done. Okay. Um, which was the majority of you? Okay, that was the majority of you guys. Um, and then for number seven, we have a few discrepancies here. Um, but the majority of you, again, chose 32 pi over three. But notice in number seven, our angle is in degrees. So if we take a look at number seven here, our theta is in degrees. And so in order to find our arc length, we first need to convert our theta. So our theta here is equal to 120 degrees, which we will then need to convert. So we're gonna multiply by pi over 180 degrees. If you do not convert, then it is incorrect, okay? So this is gonna be 120 pi over 180. And when you simplify this, um, the greatest common factor for 120 and 180 is 60. So 120 divided by 60 is two, 180 divided by 60 is three. So you get two pi over three as your theta. So then when you come over here for your arc length, you have your radius times your theta. Your radius is 16 feet. 
your theta is 2 pi over 3 radians. And multiply the 16 across. Again, you can put that over 1 to see what's on top and what's on bottom. 16 times 2 is 32 pi feet over 1 times 3 is 3. Okay. 32 does not nicely divide by 3, as far as I know. You can double check that, but I think I'm correct. Yes. So we're just going to leave it like that, 32 pi over 3. Okay. For those of you that got that correct, which was at least five of you for number seven, at least six of you for number one with three people not voting, I think you guys did pretty well. Um, the majority of you that voted chose the correct answers. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release you. Essentially, um, you your work for the rest of the time class period, which is um, more than 30 minutes at this point. Uh, you are to finish 4.1B as in boy um, with the conversions, and you are to finish 4.1C for arc length. Um, these are your classworks for today. And if you finish early, you can start your homework. Okay, do not forget to uh, take uh, pictures of your work and upload them and turn in your, your actual work. Okay, your grades have been updated. So, um, with the project grades and everything. So you guys see that as well. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. That's all I can say. Okay, so once again, you are working on 4.1B and 4.1C classworks for the rest of the period, okay? Any questions? <laughs> 